As Russia's invasion of Ukraine enters its seventh day, the Russian military claims to have taken control of Ukraine's Black Sea port of Kherson in the south of the country. If confirmed, it would be the biggest Ukrainian city to fall to Russia since fighting began. Kherson's governor says, yes, his city is surrounded, but the mayor insists we are still Ukraine. In the northeast of the country, close to the Russian border, paratroopers have landed in Ukraine's second biggest city, Kharkiv, population of about a million and a half. The mayor says at least 21 people have been killed and more than 100 injured in shelling. But reports say there has been little movement by that 40-mile-long convoy of Russian armoured vehicles north of the capital. Yesterday, five people died after Russia attacked a TV tower in Kyiv. President Biden has used his first State of the Union address to call President Putin a dictator and to describe the invasion of Ukraine as premeditated and totally unprovoked. He's also closed U.S. airspace to all Russian aircraft. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has accused Russia of seeking to erase Ukrainians, their country and their history. Let's take a look at the latest map of Ukraine and the areas that are in red show the territory controlled by Russia at this stage. The mayor of Mariupol in the south of the country says his city has also suffered heavy shelling overnight. Our first report is from our correspondent James Reynolds. At night, in Ukraine's second city of Kharkiv, there is little rest. Reports this morning say that Russian paratroopers have landed in the city as part of an aerial assault. These strikes follow this missile blast outside a government building early yesterday morning. In Kharkiv now, the simple act of going outside has become a risk. Russia's offensive reaches deep into Ukraine. These are pictures of what's claimed to be a Russian airstrike on the Ukrainian city of Zhitomir. That's 80 miles west of the capital, Kiev. Rescuers search for survivors. In Kiev, five people were killed when the main TV and radio tower was hit. Russia has warned that it's preparing to go after further targets. It may do so using forces in this 40-mile-long military convoy stationed 20 miles from the outskirts of Kiev. The build-up suggests that Russia may choose to intensify its assault in an effort to overthrow Ukraine's pro-Western government. War can slip, that's it. But Ukraine's president, Vladimir Zelensky, remains in power. He's even invited journalists in Kiev to meet him. Showing his face as often as possible has become a wartime strategy. That is why no-fly zone. These are preventative sanctions. We wanted them like other ones before. Now the sanctions have been introduced. Thanks be to God and we see how they affect the Russian economy. We warn both the president and the European Union. Introduce them preventively, introduce them earlier, and you'll see what the reaction will be, that there will not be any invasion. Millions of Ukrainians now face the hardest of choices, stay or leave. Those who remain now prepare their own homemade fortifications against the invader. James Reynolds, BBC News.